My name is Srividya Santosh and I provide unbiased guidance when it comes to higher education, premium institutes, entrance examinations, etc. You're watching Career Guidance Q&A Part 12, wherein I answer your queries regarding higher education. Let's get on to the questions. First question is from Indrajit and he says, uh, he's a volleyball player and is also interested in mechanics, electricals and designing. He's totally confused whether he should go for aerospace engineering or architecture. And also he has mentioned he is staying in a sports hostel and hence it would be difficult for him to prepare for entrance examination. Okay, Indrajit, I think like you're interested in a lot of things. You mentioned about sports, you mentioned about designing, you mentioned about engineering. Indrajit, uh, see, if you want to get into an engineering course, you have to write certain entrance examinations. If you are looking for a premium institute, obviously the entrance examinations are very competitive for getting into premium institutes. So if you are in a sports hostel and is not in a position to prepare for entrance examinations, I know it's going to be like a little difficult for you to get into premium institutes. However, you are eligible and you can get into institutes that are not that premium. but since you have asked about aerospace engineering, I will not ask you to get into a B.Tech program in aerospace engineering in a place which is not that premium. Okay. And by the way, if designing is something that is of interest to you, it is not mandatory that like you should take architecture or take a B.Tech program because in the field of designing, it is not the certifications that are going to help you. It is your skill sets. Okay. So even a diploma program or a certification program or any other program that will actually help to improve your skill set will help you in your career. So if designing is something that you are looking into, don't think of it as a bachelor degree program. Think of it as a certification program or a diploma program that enhances your skill sets. Now. Um, choosing between engineering and sports. See, since you are in a sports hostel, I think uh, you would already be like you mentioned that it's volleyball. I don't know like how interested you are in volleyball and like whether you want to take it up as a career or not because you mentioned about too many things. See, if volleyball is of interest to you, as you know, you have to do a lot of practice and you need time for that. So, if the interest is of getting onto a career as a volleyball player, I will not suggest you to go for an engineering program because the time that you need for your practice will not match with your engineering class programs. Okay, you need more time for that. Engineering also requires more time for studies and you have to attend classes. You can't do an engineering program in a distance mode. Fine. So please choose between your sports and your engineering as a bachelor degree program because even sports program you can do as bachelor degree where like you can get more time for your practice and things like that. So better choose between both these things and designing if it is of interest to you think of it as an online certification or a distance mode program or a diploma program or a certification program. Fine. And I will also tell you Indraja since you are confused in doing a lot of things better meet a career expert or do a career aptitude test to find your aptitude. Don't think of doing too many things at a time because it will take more of your time and will not get you um, help in getting skilled in any of these things. Okay, choose wisely. Good luck. Next question is from Strayers. Trace is asking about the scope and opportunities of fire and safety engineering. Okay, fire and safety engineers, they are people who actually help to design systems in buildings or places as such uh, to help protect those things from fire. It does not mean that fire engineers are those people who will help people only when there is a fire accident. There is something called prevention, right? So for preventing all these things, there has to be systems that has to be developed. If you look into the system of our country, basically, even if we are building a home, it is not necessary or it is not mandatory that we should have fire safety systems installed inside the home. But that is not the system in foreign countries. See, I live in Dubai. 
here even if we are uh, getting into a home i mean a flat or a villa or whatever that for matters even at the time of building it to get permission for the entire thing to get approval after finishing the entire thing at the time of inspection they will thoroughly check whether you have installed fire and safety systems or not okay if you have not done that properly a building is not going to get permission for um, occupying people that is how the foreign country system goes but in our country uh, fire and safety systems are there but it is only for the warehouses or factories or companies and things like that at homes this is not something which is mandated so fire and safety engineers um, work in those places i mean like those companies or with government organizations which are related to all these things fire and safety engineering there are two type of programs right after 12th one is a bachelor degree program which is called a btech fire and safety engineering course now this course is not so common in our country there are only like handful of universities that uh, provide these type of programs in a btech level but diploma programs are being provided by a lot of institutes in our country uh if you are looking for getting employed in a foreign country it's not just about getting a certification it is all about some countries also have systems like this they have to get the certificates attested or write the exam that has been conducted by the authorities concerned in that country that deals with the fire and safety systems only if you write that examination and get the license or you prove that like you are skilled in doing all these things you get jobs in those countries that's how it works The question is: Studying JE Main Batch or JE Advanced is better for cracking JE Main. Okay, two-year plan. Bracket pay written two thousand twenty-four. Just completed ten. Okay, my dear, you have to understand what exactly JE examination is. JE has got two levels. The first level is called a JE Main. And once you clear the JE main examination, you get an opportunity to write the JE advanced examination. It's not that like anybody can just go and directly write JE advanced. It does not work like that. You have to clear JE main to get on to JE advanced. So if you are in grade ten right now and is moving to grade eleven, what you have to do is uh, you have to go for a JE coaching. Now all the centers that provide JE coaching, they the coaching that they are giving is for JE main, basically for JE main. but that does not mean that like you are not getting equipped to write the je advanced examination however let me remind you that the pattern of je main and je advanced is totally different but the first thing that you have to get through is je main which consists of mcq questions also in vt model where like uh, you have to find the answer and the uh, option is not given and the answer is going to be a number that's called an mvt model type of question so the institutes basically prepare you to answer the je main questions but the topics that have been covered by the coaching institutes or by the schools that helps you to answer the je advanced questions too the only thing is the pattern is different so don't think that like uh, don't get confused thinking whether i have to go for a je main coaching or je advanced coaching the coaching is called jee coaching the institute that you are uh, going for coaching they very well know how to coach you and get you equipped for main and advanced so you don't get confused just go for a je coaching if you are choosing some institute for the coaching that's how it works okay ruba exotics the question is about astronomy astrophysics and space science and the bachelor degree programs related to all these things okay now astronomy is all about the universe beyond earth's atmosphere it can be anything which is related to things that we can see with our naked eye uh, like sun or moon or stars or it can even be the things that we cannot see with our naked eye like the far away galaxies or the very tiny particles etc that's basically astronomy now astrophysics is the methods and principles of physics and chemistry in the study of astronomical objects that's called astrophysics space science is also something is related to it like if you ask me what exactly space science is it is space science is basically the exploration or um, study of a natural phenomena and physical bodies okay that occur in the outer space that is basically space science now 
studying all these programs in bachelor level, BSc level. If you ask me whether there are programs in our country that uh, provides a BSc in astrophysics or astronomy or space science, yes, it is there. But not in all universities. Only a very few universities in our country provides programs uh, in a bachelor level for all these things. But there are also premium institutes. For example, IIST, Indian Institute of Space Science Technology. If you get a seat for any of these programs in IIST, not all these programs are there. But by the way, like it is all about like space and related things, and it's a premium institute. And if you get a seat uh, right after twelfth in places like IIST, it's well and good. Please go ahead with that. Or else, I will not suggest you to go for these programs right after twelfth. If you are interested in astrophysics, better go for a physics program after your 12th, BSc Physics. And still, if you are interested in proceeding further with astrophysics, do your astrophysics in your master's level. Okay? To become an astrophysicist, it's not mandatory that you should take BSc Astrophysics, then go for MSc Astrophysics, and then do your PhD. No, it's not mandatory. You can go for your uh, general physics program, which is BSc Physics, then go for Astrophysics, and then get uh, a PhD in that, and then go ahead like that. So whatever these courses that you have asked me, whether it be astronomy, astrophysics or uh, space science, these are all things which are majorly related with physics. Okay, that does not mean that it's only physics, but majorly related with physics. So better take a physics program and then proceed further. But if you're that much interested and you're damn sure that like this is what I have to study and I'm not going to change from this, so I want to do all these things from a bachelor's level, then pick up any of the universities and go ahead. But better try to get an institute, uh, get a seat in a premium institute like an IIS. Fatima is asking me about steps to become a pediatric psychologist. Okay, uh, so a pediatric psychologist is basically a person who provides intervention when it comes to children. Okay, for various conditions in their developing stages or anything as such. If you want to become a pediatric psychologist, it's not a, a BSc program in pediatric psychology because we don't have such a program in bachelor's level in our country. What you have to do is you have to go for your BSc psychology program right after your grade 12. After completing your BSc psychology for your master's level, you can specialize in pediatric psychology. And that too, the specializations in our country when it comes to psychology is very limited but uh, in foreign countries there are a lot of specializations that are available in master's level when it comes to psychology that does not mean that like pediatric psychology is not at all available in our country what i meant was like you don't have like much of places that offers these type of programs so you can either do it in india or you can go to a foreign country for doing your master's in pediatric psychology there are various types of sub specializations that you can do after your psychology program in uh, i mean bsc psychology and then master level you can do various uh, specializations now also understand there's a difference between pediatric psychologist and pediatric psychiatrist also okay now pediatric psychiatrist is a person who completes mbbs first and then specializes in psychiatry and the sub sub specialization is pediatric psychiatry okay that's a different game altogether you have asked about pediatric psychology now your step is Complete your 12th first, better go for your science stream and then go for your BSc psychology and then get specialized for your masters in pediatric psychology. It will always be better if you could do a PhD too. The question is from KR. The question is uh, explain about MBA in digital marketing. Okay. The MBA program which you can do after any graduation. You can do like a lot of specializations while you do your MBA program. The general specializations that we have heard about in our country is basically HR, sales, finance, operations, etc. Okay. But there are a lot of other specializations too, like you know, your digital marketing or artificial intelligence. So many new generation specializations that has come. But these sub specializations are actually not available in a lot of uh, institutes that you will see around you. There is nothing wrong in going for a MBA in digital marketing where you are specializing in digital marketing. However, I want you to understand that when you take up a specialization in MBA, it's not that the entire four semesters of your program, you are studying that particular elective. Um, in the system of our country and basically in our India, MBA is a two-year program okay? and it is four semesters. The first year has got two semesters, the second year has got two semesters. 
the electives are something which you do in your second year that means in your third and fourth semester so in your third and fourth semester you will be doing digital marketing that does not mean you will be extremely skilled in digital marketing if you are doing an mba program in digital marketing i would always advise you to do a certification program or a diploma program in digital marketing to understand more about this the questions for this week is going to an end what are the confusions that you have related to your higher education courses career or whatever it is please drop in the comments below this video so that i can pick those questions and answer those in an upcoming video see you in the next video bye bye